gets twisted. This is Mark McNeese with my co-host Rick Rose, and you're listening to another edition of The Twist. Welcome to The Twist Podcast, everybody. Show number 69, Rick. What do you think of that? I love it, man. I told you the day would come. Do you think still people still make these sort of sexual innuendos about the number 69? I do, but you, do. you mean like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I do. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's, I couldn't tell if it was like passe, if it was like something from a previous generation. <laughs> well, I don't know. They still use it in the Sarah Sa- uh, Sanders story, you know. She was uh, 69. Really? Oh, no, she wasn't. She was 86. Never mind. Oh, 86, right. And we're, I, for a second there, I thought you I thought you were talking about Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy See where stuff. your mind goes. No, we're gonna, no we're gonna... I was talking about the big fat ass, whatever she is. Secretary oh, don't whatever. fat shame her. I didn't fat shame her. I'm just stating a fact. You can now up... that I'm 24 pounds down in weight. Oh, you're, you know... I'm so proud of you. You can yeah. ugly shame her, but don't fat shame her. And don't turn away from the phone because I can't hear you. Oh, I can't ugly shame her because she's far pregnant. I know, and we don't ugly shame anybody. But be really careful with the phone thing because you're coming in and out. I know, and you know this is an issue, everyone. I'm getting, I'm getting forgetful. I just moved, as you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I lost weight. I'm using the keto diet. So 12 days, and I'm down 24 pounds. It's like keto. Is that like where you gamble when you pick the numbers that are no, going to come up? That's a good. That's keto. Oh, it's keto. Like, I'm sorry. Isn't Keto the name of the guy that was friends with O.J. Simpson? No, that's Kato. Kato. Keto Kalen. Oh, geez. There's so many Keto Kato's and so much in the news. I mean, I jumped right into the news with the Sarah story. But anyway, nonetheless, I usually use a headphone, guys, and I can't find it because I moved and put everything away, and I'm very forgetful. But I am drinking my uh, coffee with butter, you know, grass-fed butter in it. It's oh, powerful. I love that. I mean, I don't love it. It sounds horrible, but. Um, coffee with butter. I, and by the way, we're gonna be we're gonna be back on YouTube. There was a there was an absolute demand for that. So when the podcast goes out, it'll be on SoundCloud, Libsyn, uh, iTunes, and uh, YouTube now. So check us out. Very, very excited. Very excited. We're gonna talk about Sarah, by the way. The other one, the Huckabee. Yeah, we are. We got a lot of news going on. Big big week in immigration. Big week in well, and it's not ending. You know, they you know Trump out of pressure was signing the thing to reunite families and not keep them separated from the borders but then like the day after it was a major crackdown one of the largest ever uh, with the ice group 146 people arrested in ohio i think it was at a meat factory and then of course now he's saying people aren't allowed in our country as soon as they step across the border they're going back and they have no fear. right he wants to he wants to eliminate due process and yeah. those of us who are paying attention and there are millions millions of us who are paying attention this is how fascism works. You know, he's they're going to suspend due process for the immigrants. Who's next, folks? I mean, people think it can't happen to them. If you're I mean, if you're a, a white Christian Republican, you're probably going to uh, not care and never, never be affected. But uh, I've got my eyes open and we should all have our eyes open. We're going to get to that later in the podcast. But this is what's going on when you suspend due process. For one group, it's it's very easy to spend, suspend it for the next. Well, you know, I feel very strongly that he's headed to be a dictator and have fascism. Even he was in Duluth, Minnesota, not far from where we are, the northern part of our state. It's just over the border of Duluth on Wednesday night. And he was interrupted by a protester. There's a lot of that going on, as we know. You know, uh, the battle with what's going on in our country is now being fought openly, like even with what happened to Huckabee. But anyway, the guy had a bun on, a man bun which I'm not fond of either. And Trump had him removed with the sneering comedy. He said, was he a man or a woman? Because he needs a haircut more than I do. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Then he said to the protester, go home to your mom, darling. And everybody in the crowd cheered. Tell me that's not. No, they're vicious. They're vicious to the core. And that's why they like this guy. You know, he gets to, he made them, he made it okay to be ugly. I mean, that's what one of the Trump's, Trump's real accomplishments the last three years. Of course, he was always ugly. But he's made it okay to be ugly, to be anti-gay, to be racist, and to pretend that you're not. I mean, that's these, they're, so, they're so into pretending that they're not all of the things that they obviously are. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's tragic. But I'm not yeah, letting... I'm not all gonna... headed down a path of bigotry and hate and uh, conformity. Like, he wants this country to be the country he wants, and he wants to be the ruler of it. And, well, uh, and, and the Huckabee, since we brought her up, we might as well throw her in there. 
her father, who I've, who I've always despised, um, tweeted after she was a asked to leave the restaurant in Virginia, <laughs> Uh, bigotry's on the menu and blah 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 and i thought dude how do you think gay couples feel when we're told that we can't that you're not going to make a cake some baker's not going to make a cake because it violates his deeply held beliefs excuse me the restaurant owner had deeply held mm -hmm. beliefs too uh and she should have every right to say i'm not serving you um you know if if, if i can be denied a, a wedding cake for god's sake uh, get out of my restaurant, man. This is what I mean. I don't want us to go down this path at all. And people don't seem to, some people don't understand that we're not cheering her being evicted from a restaurant. I don't want anyone evicted from a restaurant and I don't want anyone refused to service at a at a bakery. I agree. Well, that her name, the owner's name was Stephanie Wilkinson, and she did ask her staff what they wanted. She was home quietly in our little community of Lexington when she got the call from her staff saying what to do. So it was really their say. And I totally agree. I mean, and that's why Mike Huckabee from Arkansas, yeah, never been a fan. He thought he'd be our president one day, too. But Oh, my um, God, who would be worse? Basically, you know, when she called Sanders out, I think she even called her to the patio or something and basically explained, could you leave? You know, we're a restaurant. I have gays and lesbians on my staff that feel very strongly about the Supreme Court ruling. You know, that's one ruling that I just didn't understand and didn't agree with when they ruled that you can be selective. And then it's going on. Like I said, it's a new way of fighting things. is isn't protesting. It's personal attacks. You know, uh, you've got that going on days before you had uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security going to a Mexican restaurant. A Mexican the restaurant. They still eat in Mexican restaurants. They get served by Mexicans, <laughs> uh, but yeah. they're going to take their children's away. OK. Yeah, no, it's bad. And then I didn't realize Pam Bundy, Bondi, the Florida attorney general who often appears on Fox News that's really aligned with Trump. She was shouted down at a movie screening in Tampa on Friday. They started screaming, you're a horrible person. And then one of his advisors, Stephen Miller, also confronted a restaurant last week. Uh, he was confronted at a restaurant. At a Mexican was, restaurant. They were. It was yeah. another Mexican restaurant. They have yeah, no problem eating Mexican fast. food. Yeah, that's true. But then what I, what I don't get is out in California, Maxine Waters, who I, I'm aligned with and like very much. She said on MSNBC about the whole thing that she had no sympathy for the serving of uh, in the administration who knew it's wrong uh, for those serving in the administration that know what's wrong. And she kind of what I read was encouraged people to speak up when they see Trump's people out and about. Well, so Rick, I, I think what I agree with, I hadn't I wasn't aware of her saying that. But what I do agree with is that it's we have to use the tools available to us. We have an administration and a Republican controlled government. Who really is in service to Trump now? There is no Republican Party. John Boehner said that, but we have to fight back in the ways that we can, because they don't treat us like we matter. Now it's you know for for years now, months certainly since this election, uh, I've been re you know all the articles in the papers about how we have to listen to the the old white folks in the diners and the forgotten people. They don't listen to us. Excuse me, they don't listen to us, and they have. Trump has no problem governing as if we don't exist. The only people who exist to the Republican Party or what's what used to be the Republican Party are the people who vote for them. We don't exist. And so we have to fight back in ways that we can. And if that means shaming somebody in a movie theater or a restaurant, what else are we supposed to do? I mean, we're going to vote in November. I think the next, the day after the election is going to be a, an extremely telling moment in this country. But we have to fight back in the ways that we can. Well, I hear you, and let's hope that day falls on an episode of The Twist, because we'll have lots to say. Oh, my God, have... yes, Rick. We're going to be sobbing, or or but just celebrating. You do. You do. We will be celebrating. I mean, Coffee with yeah. a pound of butter. Yeah, there you go. You've got Bloomberg throwing $50 million into thank that Thank goodness. Election. Thank goodness for Michael Bloomberg, let me yeah, tell you. That'll be a great thing, because he wants to see the wave come back. But just one quick comment. You are right. I know the bell rang. We have to move on to the next comment. But well, because we'll just know, be angry, and we'll be them. I don't want to turn into them. No, we don't. And she basically said, Waters in the comments, said he's done, his crew has done unconscionable damage to people in the country. And you are right. That's how ACT UP started. You know, they silenced us in many ways. Uh, death, death, silence equals death. That was the big motto of ACT UP when people weren't doing anything about HIV and AIDS care and compassion and treatment. And it did work. So you can ring the bell again. I'm done speaking now because, you know, okay. I had a bells can't hold me back. Trump they can't, can't stop me. you, Rick. They can't stop us. Uh, but we're going to move on here. ABC has ordered um, The Connors, like a spinoff of Roseanne, without Roseanne. I mean, I have a certain level of compassion for her. I, I honestly do, because 
one, I don't want to be a hater. I really don't. I mean, I could despise Trump, but I don't. That's that's different from from being hateful. Um, but Roseanne, she's got problems. I've always thought she had mental pro and emotional problems. And I'm sorry that she destroyed her career and, and put all these jobs in jeopardy. But um, they're coming back without her, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i watch certainly watch the first episode of The Connors. Without well, you her. watched her show, didn't you? Once, once. Uh, well, then it's worth watching. I was hoping that – I guess they're going to beef up the two uh, more liberal characters or something. I don't know. She did come out with her – you know, first time in the public talking about this uh, today I, or sometime this week. A couple I, days ago. Weekend. Uh, was it? I didn't read any of it, but yeah. Well, I feel All bad right, for well, her. She was, you know, because I don't think she can help herself. She's not Trump. You know, he can definitely help him. He knows exactly what the fuck he's doing. But um, anyways, excuse me for the F-bomb, folks. Okay. It's Bell. Let's talk Let's about move more on to other things. Yeah, we'll move on to more wieners. For now, the for a minute. Fanatic, who's the mascot for the Phillies. Uh, Who? The Philly fanatic. Okay, go ahead. It's the mascot. For yeah, right. All right. I mean, I don't know that, but I'm saying it. Yeah. Well, you may know this story. This week, he shot a woman in the face with a hot dog gun and sent her to the hospital. <sighs> yeah. What's a hot dog gun? Well, you know, they, they like the mascots. They have guns, slingshots, and they sling T-shirts into the audience. But in the Philly games, they sling hot dogs into it. This woman tried to catch her. Her name was Kathy McBay. It hit her in the face, knocked her glasses off, gave her a black eye, sent her to the emergency room. Oh, my gosh. This happened on Monday during the Phillies' home game against the Cardinals. And she didn't even care. She was happy. She smiled. She's a I'm fan. Sure. She's famous. And yeah. I thought, um, for a second there, I thought it was some kind of vendetta. Oh, no, no, no. And actually, of all mascots, it's the one that sued the most. I didn't know you have a risk of being a mascot, but sued for various reasons. But, uh. She got a hematoma in her eye, and it's going to spread across her face. Probably did. But again, she's in good spirits. So careful of those hot dog slingers. Yeah, watch out, folks. Um, Pony Boy explores an intersect youth, intersex youth's journey towards self-acceptance. This is just a movie. A River Gallows film boasts Emma Thompson and Stephen Fry on the producing term. Uh, the film follows the titular character played by River Gallo. Uh, an intersex Latina runaway who is employed at a laundromat by day, but who spends his nights as a sex worker. Anyways, it's just one of those like to watch kind of things or put it on your list because um, it's an intersex character being played by an intersex actor. And oh, intersex, by the way, for people who don't know any better, I'm sorry to talk that way. Um, it's not transgender. It intersex mean it means that you're born with um with both physical parts. You know, with both male and female parts. And it does happen, remember, Michael? Oh, Phelps. it happens all the time. It happens all the time. And they used to just cut off the penises. Like if it was, there was a famous case about a guy who ended up killing himself because the, the um, and this was decades ago, that they, they, you know, it, it, what do you call it? They they cut off his penis and tried to castrate. raise him. Castrate. Ca no, well, no, not castrate. Well, no, it's they, more they than castrate. eliminated his penis and tried to raise him as a girl, but he wasn't a girl. So he, and he ended up killing himself. But yeah, intersex babies are born all the time. Well, they call, we used to call them hermaphrodites, remember? Right, which is now, of course, we can't, we don't use that well, word. Well, yeah, but... Michael, we, we had this story when we talked about it. Michael Phelps was dating an inter intersex model, remember? I didn't know that. Wow. Oh, well, Mark, we had it on the show. Okay, moving on from hot dogs to wieners to whatever. Can we go on? I'm not belittling it because no, it no, is. No. Uh, of course, we're, we're trying to move on. Yeah. Well, right. they, you know, I read an article in the New York Times that said it's no longer LGBTQ. You know, now it's A and I. Oh, and my plus. gosh. No, it's not. Go ahead. No, it's not. Oh, well, I got big news, Mark. Just quick personal story. Rick Rose is joining the task force, the LGBTQ task force for heroin and opiates here in Dane County, Madison area. I go to my first meeting today at noon. I'm excited getting back into the community that way, but also getting back out and doing what I can about the opiate um, issue. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, the queue, the queue is now definitely seems to be permanently part of it. You know, it took a, a few years ago, it was LGBT and then sometimes the queue. But now the queue is definitely, I see it there all the time. And they say it's queer questioning. And they or don't questioning. Look, they kind of leave it everywhere. Or quaint. I, it could be quaint. I mean, I know well, a lot of quaint queers. It could be. Q, Q. I just, you, I would just call our whole thing the queue. The queue the plus. Q, the queue pot, queue audiobooks. It's one of my little features on LGBT Senior where I highlight an audiobook it's just called q audiobook yeah for those listening that don't know what that is lgbt oh you don't have to plug the show it's i okay. want to plug lgbtsr because mark created this website that was associate editor on and got a lot of contributors and now it's a facebook group and you can follow it but the website's still there too and 
Oh yeah, it's I great. still post stuff on the website all the time. Yeah, it's for fifty plus Q people, and, and it's our awesome. friends and allies. Yeah, and our friends and allies who can be younger, who can be straight, who they can, can be, be whatever. Republicans. It's okay. We're, we're we're all inclusive. Ring the bell. Bell. I got one. Oh, was that my story? Did I lose my chance? No, go ahead. I'll get, I got the next one. Burger King apologizes for an ad offering burgers to Russian women who get pregnant by World Cup players. Yes, the Russian group of franchisees of Burger King did an ad tied in with the World Soccer Cup that basically promised a reward of free burgers to to any women who get the best football genes. So they were encouraging it. They said, go out. We want to keep the best football genes and ensure the success of the Russian team in soccer for generations to come. So go out and screw the soccer players. And whoever screws the most soccer players gets free Burger King burgers. Well, Burger King International came down, pulled the ad, said it's not appropriate. God, that's kind of interesting, huh? It is interesting. It's a very Vladimir Putin. Very Putin. Very mm -hmm. Trump-like. Very Trump-like. Uh, ISIS is beaten in Iraq, but Iraq is still hell for LGBT people. It was just an inter well, I mean, it was a sad article about... I mean, we know that life over life in many, many, many countries for us is terrible. And uh, I guess I guess it doesn't matter that ISIS is defeated. Life for Iraqi gay people is horrible and they get killed all the time by their family members. I don't mean to laugh, but you know what I mean? It's like just the idea of being killed by your father or your brother uh, because you're gay is, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a wet dream here for people like Pence, but over there it's a reality. Uh, we had a woman speak yesterday about the Rwanda genocide, and it was a story similar to what you're talking about. For three months in the spring of 94, if people remember the African nation of Rwanda descended into one of the most vicious and bloody genocides. There are tribes over there, and one of the tribes was, by the government, asked to be obliterated. They killed a million people by the time it was over. Um, and the woman that spoke actually was via video. She's part of the conference. And she was a young university student that was locked in a three by four book bathroom with um, six other women. And she had a for all three months. She came out uh, living. But anyway, it reminds me of the story you're talking about. It's like I'm sitting there reflecting where was I in 94? I was also a university student. No, I wasn't. I was out by then. Not a, oh, God, no, I was way older by then. I was like 29 years old. My dad had died. A lot of stuff going on in my life. I moved from California back to Wisconsin. And didn't even think of what was going on with a million people dying. And uh, she wrote a book called Left to Tell, Discovering God Amidst the Rwanda Holocaust. But I only bring it up. It's not really a story. It, it will lead into a story later in the show. But just the point is, be aware of what's going on in the world, folks. You know, I do. I have to be aware, too. And I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Just because ISIS is gone doesn't mean there's horrible human atrocities going on, you know, like even on our own in our own country. Ring right. the bell. That's it. And do and do find those uh, find that little microphone because you're 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 I know. Uh, I know you're hit and miss with the audio. And I'm hearing your husband in the background. There just I hear you. now I hear you perfectly. What did you just do? I was moving closer to the microphone to tell you I hear your husband in the background. Oh thank you. Thank you. And yeah. he is my husband. I call him that now. I know. But he's talking, Mark. That's okay. He sings. He gets he gets up in the morning and sings. Oh, that's okay. I'll be closer to yeah, the mic. Yeah, I know. I like that. I like that. That's one of the better parts of the day. I'm down to like a couple stories. Me too. Okay. House GOP quietly introduces legislation to gut Medicare and repeal the Affordable Care Act. This none of, like stuff like this is not surprising in the least. But you know, part of what's going, part of what happens with with the, in the in Trump world, is that the news every single day is is like consumed with his viciousness and all this insane crap that he puts out and um so they're able to do all kinds of things in the background and they've been doing it i mean they've been destroying the epa and gutting these these departments and you know there's no pride acknowledgement from the white house for the first time in eight years that's no big surprise but um anyways you know they're doing all kinds of shit in the background and and the Republican, the Republican House, of course they want to gut Medicare and Medicaid. They've wanted to do it ever since they, those things were passed. I mean, the Republicans have hated the New Deal, which was Roosevelt's great accomplishment, since it happened. I mean, they've wanted, they don't want, they don't even want Social Security. It's a, it's a ridiculous, it's a bullshit that they want Social Security. They're just, they just can't get rid of it yet, but they're going to try. And they're definitely going to make Medicare more expensive and uh, do everything they can to 
to get rid of Medicaid or for you know encourage people not to sign up for it. So, but I'm not surprised. But this is the kind of stuff you have to pay attention to, and it's hard when when every day the the first thing on the TV news is some Trump tweet, you know. Well, the story I have is about the merging. So all this stuff's happening undercover, as we talked about. The Republicans love it because they're doing all their little work while we got our shit show going on. Did you even know there's a proposal on the table? And it looks like it was voted approved on Thursday. I'm just kind of getting some more details. The White House wants to merge the Departments of Education and Labor. I saw that. Put the kids to work. I love that. Yeah, that's the whole idea. You know, and, and, and some reports that I'm reading say, oh, it won't really make a difference. All they're trying to do is uh, Department of Education apparently has the smallest staff, which makes sense in this fucking country. I, I say that like it doesn't make sense, but I mean, it makes sense because we're not putting enough attention on on education, so no doubt they have a small staff. And but but it does make a difference because the plan is to reorganize the federal government, not just by you know like this one story says, oh your 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 department title will change. It's more than that, freaking folks. How can you more merge something that's in charge of education with something that's in charge of labor? And they came right out. The administration says it's because we feel we want to, uh, we want to educate and train people for jobs that are available. So. You know, this whole movement in our country toward free uh, community college education, I'm all about it. But I don't understand the growth of community colleges. You know, over two years, uh, liberal colleges are going away. Four-year liberal arts, those kind of mindsets, humanitarian thought, are going away because they're expensive. They're not track-oriented for the jobs that we have available with the tech tech coming in. You know, you just need certain jobs. You don't have to be a free thinker anymore. And it scares the hell out of me. Um, yeah. Do you get my point without me going any further? Did you I do. I totally get your point. Okay. It all scares yeah. the hell out of me. We already talked about Sarah, so I'm just down to two things. Yeah, good. I'm down to a couple too, and then I got my big one. Well, cool. one, my one of mine is George Will. It was one actually one of my quotes. I'll just go ahead and read read Mr. Will. George Will. He's a conservative commentator. He's a bit of no Trumper from the beginning. But he's he's a, a very intelligent man, and sometimes I sometimes I find his I don't agree with a lot of what he writes, but sometimes I do because he's actually one of those people who doesn't who isn't locked into seeing things one way. Uh, but anyways, he wrote an op-ed about how we how and this is a Republican, and he's not alone saying that people need to vote Democratic in the midterms to put a check on Trump. Um, not because he wants Republicans in power, but because he wants he he thinks that Congress has completely the Republican con Congress has completely abdicated its responsibility as an equal branch of government, and they have. They're all about they're all about being afraid of primaries and Trump voters in their MAGA hats. So, anyways, this is just a line from Will's op-ed that he did, he wrote last week. In today's GOP, which is the president's plaything, he is the mainstream. mainstream. To vote against his party's cowering congressional caucuses is to affirm the nation's honor while quarantining him. So I hope enough people listen, people of good conscience. Um, to, I would rather have divided government than this, and that's I that's I don't see anything else saving us. Oh man, that's uh, that's a good quote. I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Oh no, go ahead because I got one more. Then it's really uplifting. So you go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, this isn't my quote story. I have a couple stories to run out. Ring that bell, ring that bell, and then I have a quote. Um, ding. Ding. Oh, I'm sorry. You go, then I'll go, then you go, then we go. You know, Mark, I lost my bell in a hotel room, I think. You know, I travel a lot for the show. I Did I send it to you? I hope I didn't. What? No, my I didn't bell? send you the bell. You bought the bell, I hope. No, I bought it at a restaurant. Okay, no, that's fine. Because I've sent you stuff, yeah. and they, it just vanishes. It, or it gets recycled. and. <laughs> over in china waiting to be taken care of that's one of my stories i caught about you know we got issues guys because we send all this stuff to china now they don't want to play with us and they have too much plastic and now we got to figure out where this is all Stralis. going. we gotta go Stralis. we have to I yeah I, I have lyft expands its program to bring free rides to cancer patients if you're debating oh i heard that lyft. i like that i love it and that's all i gotta say you know people are like should i use it? you uber or should i use lyft i'm all about lyft they're working with the american cancer society if you need a ride, you call American Cancer Society 800 number. They hook you up with Lyft in certain cities, not all, uh, but it's expanded across the country. I do know it's in Vegas, Miami. Uh, it's going to Philly. Watch out for the hot dogs, Atlanta and Los Angeles. Beautiful. Another reason to support Lyft, even if they don't have that service in your community uh, by taking cancer, people to their appointments at least uh, support Lyft in your community. 
I got another one here. The three new flavors of of Snicker bars. I sent you the picture the other day. You did like annoyance and grievance. What are they? What are what are oh, the other ones? <laughs> They ask the question and their title, that's what they're called, and then they have a flavor that goes with them. One is called Irritable, and it's espresso, so it's got espresso beans, and it's about time a major candy manufacturer takes on espresso beans. Absolutely. Wimpy, and it's an energy bar, and basically, no, it's fiery. It's fiery. It's got, like, jalapeno pepper in it, which I love, spicy. And then my friends told me that it's out on the shelves already in Minnesota, the one called Indecisive. It's salty and sweetie and oh, sweet. fun. I can't decide. Well, you know, like, I don't know. I'm not doing any because they're not on keto. But just so you know, they're out and about. And uh, I find it interesting. I love it. Uh, Did you know that a... I was a Lyft ambassador? I wanted to try to get that in. I didn't know that. I was. I when wondered. I first left, lost my job in um, the office gig in New York City, where I don't live anymore, um, I was, you know, trying to think of ways I could make money. And I was a Lyft ambassador. But I never made any, I never made a penny. But I don't know what that does. That what, what it does thing? is it's funny that you know associates. I'm an associate at the giant Lyft ambassadors. It just means you try to get people to use Lyft and you get a cut every. You know, with every. What person. were you doing? Social media. Yeah, that kind of thing. You get a code number, and if they use your code to call their first Lyft car, you get like a very small cut. But it never. Well, happened. that was back in the day, boy. You were doing it when Lyft was just coming out because you lost your job years ago. I know, That's but crazy. I no, I lost my job. Well, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. I didn't get out on the street and hand out the, the little business well, cards and shit. No, they, that's a job for people in Vegas, you know, supporting hookers. Avocado toast trend has hit Colombia. Colombia is, I think, the number three grower of avocados in the world, and they don't get it. They're like, I see images of people spreading avocado on toast and wondering what it's all about. Yeah, like, what the hell is that? Americans are and so they must go, Oh my god, we've had avocado since we we're kids, but now there's new avocado bar restaurants opening. One is called La Bocaderia. It's open three months ago in the city of Medellin, and they serve shakes and pies and everything avocado it's on the keto diet mark and i did make a very good cocoa avocado pudding it's delicious. It's really good i like that i had another story by the way okay go that's my that's my story well this is my last one before the um the biggies uh the british royal family is going to have their first same-sex wedding like the monarchy is going to have a same-sex wedding it's historical really? oh absolutely yeah uh in May. Well, wait a minute. Oh, no, this is to make a Markle. But in the future, it's sometime later this summer, Lord Ivar Mountbatten will marry James Coyle, his partner of two years, in the monarchy's first ever same-sex wedding later this summer. Is that not fabulous? Yeah, that's the kind of story I looked for. And you found it, and I didn't. Oh, yeah, I think it's great. Because we've been watching The Crown, and we watch all these British shows, so I think it's just marvelous. That's fantastic. I didn't know it. Um moving on to big stories here's my first big one and then i have another one that's, that's yeah good. you do so, one then i do one then you close up okay cool and then so here it is this one i don't have a quote attached to it though but america's millennials are waking up to a grim financial future this was written by ben steverman and bloomberg and it basically is it's very interesting and i shared it with some friends who said oh i want you to share that with me so here's what's going on these millennials when they when they look at those american-born people in the 80s, which are basically the cradle of millennials, they had fi family wealth, personally, that was 34% below what their earlier generations held at the same age. So if that makes sense to you, their earning potential, it's not even potential, but what they're earning is 34% less than what the generation before them had. <clears throat> and they're basically saying not only what's going on in the past. So they're being hit by the crisis of 2007. They're seeing some results of that. In the future, they're up by being also hit by the fact that by 2034 that's the year social security is predicted to not any longer be able to pay out full benefits so those of us that are on the boomer edge or gen x or even a little bit of gen y we're okay we're still going to benefit from that in the back end we're not really facing what happened in the crunch i mean a lot of us lost a lot of our retirement and different issues like that but they're saying that the millennials are waking up to this the other thing of course they're coming out of it with huge college debt and now that opposes my thought that we should be doing four-year colleges because these are still the generation coming out of four-year colleges. So they have a lot of debt and it's hard to find jobs, especially jobs that are paying well near where they live, which is mom and dad's house. Most, you know, I can't believe even in Madison, how many kids that age do not even have a car mark. It's yeah. so bewildering to me. So <clears throat> uh, the quote from the article, I'll use this as the quote, we turn the economy into a miserable hellscape and you're just going to have to deal with it is the quote. The message left from millennials because they better figure it out. I mean, we should help them, but 
Of course, well, the one. They also important. better vote because I was when you first started talking about this. I wanted to say, and all this was brought to them by their parents. You know, voting Republican because the Republican policies have been for, ever since Reagan have been all about creating this hellscape where everybody sinks or swims on their own. So I mean. If yeah, that's if, true. If you're a younger person and you think you're not going to have Medicare, you're not going to have Social Security, you can thank your fucking grandfather for voting for Donald Trump. So No, that brings up a good point. In the, in the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. They do say in the article. <laughs> that's why there was such a large vote from that crowd for Bernie Sanders. And um, not large enough because people, they get fired up, but probably not enough. So, yes, go out. You have a vote. Use it. Yeah, and I wish they'd won. I wish I wish we'll, we'll never know if Sanders would have won. But Clinton certainly certainly didn't. My big story and my quote, it's just the immigration thing. I mean, it's everybody's big story. I'm appalled by it. Um, and I and I know I happen to know from reading that it's a fake. It's a fake issue. We don't have an immig immigrant crisis. We don't have a migrant crisis. This has all been created just like, you know, I and I I'm very sorry to say that I think it's time for the Nazi comparisons. It's it's time for the Mussolini, no, it is. It the is. Mussolini comparisons, and it this is. is what they this is what the Nazis in Germany did. They vilified Jews. They started small. They just made every all of the country's problems about the Jews. And so you know, Trump Trump, I don't think he studies history, but he instinctively knows this. So he's railing on and on and on every day about migrants and illegal immigrants and they're infesting, they're vermin, they're rodents coming into our country and we have to, and we're taking their children away and putting them into pens and uh, I, I think we're witnessing something really horrifying and um, I don't care what his supporters think anymore. Like Frank sometimes will, he like gets upset and how can they not see this? And I know other people, how can his supporters not see this? I don't give a shit that they don't see it. They're not going to see it. They don't want to see it. But I'm a human being and I think that as a, as a, as a, not a Christian, as a, not a religious person, that my morals are, are, are a hell of a lot stronger and more admirable than an awful lot of people in their, in their church pews who vote for this man. They think God put him in the White House. They don't have any problem with children being taken from their parents and put into cages and pens. And, uh, it's just really a horrible situation. I, and I also think, too, that it's not going to stop there. I, I have this habit of saying stuff on Facebook, and then I'll take it down like an hour later because I just don't want to obsess over people commenting on it. But I think it's there's always going to be a he's Trump is going to always need to vilify some group. What are you doing? You're here. I'm hearing lots of like bing, 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 bing. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at someone. I'm listening to you. I hear no, it's not that you're not listening. It's that I keep hearing you're, you're moving your phone or something. It's like, I am. I am. But go ahead about vilification. Oh, that it's not going to stop there. It's like he needs the immigrants. He needs the migrants right now to hate on and get his base all cheering loudly. But what happens when that issue is gone? You know, he's got the Democrats. He's doing that too. the media. He's doing that too. When you when you do that, eventually you're going to need somebody else to turn that anger on. Yep. And if you don't, if you're gay and you don't think that's ever going to come at you, you need to think again. I mean, it's already come at black athletes and the Democrats and the media and um, migrants. But he's always got to have somebody to blame. That's uh, that's what I'm trying to point at. It's so. not just about the blame. And I'm going to speak up because it's also what I talked about with the man bun thing. So these other countries like what happened in Nazism and what happened in Germany, they attacked the Jews, which were a weaker person or in Rwanda, they attacked the tribe. That was the weaker tribe, define weaker, however, but there was weaknesses. And what happened in, in um, Nazism, too, in any fascist movement, they picked the queers because they weren't as organized and ready to go. So you got me fired up because you're right. We do need to speak up because what he's done from day one, from when he was in the spotlight to be an elected official, was attack handicapped people, attack Muslims, attack women, which he's still doing, attack guys that wear man buns, don't honor gays during Pride Month. This is an issue, Mark. And yeah. people don't realize it. It's exactly the movement you're talking about. People may say, oh, you guys have this conspiracy theory. He's just doing his thing. Bullshit. And he's and he's riding on people also that are weak with weaker in education, weaker with diversity experience and people that don't understand the bigger picture. Oh, yeah. Well, here's my quote. Um, <clears throat> it's from an article. It's just from an article about these kids just being being housed all over the country now because they're putting them they're squirreling them away in houses and shit all over the country yeah. uh 
Quote, and now they live and wait in unfamiliar places, big American suburban houses where no one speaks their language, a locked shelter on a dusty road where they spend time, little time outside, a converted Walmart where each morning they are required to stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance in English mm. to the country that holds them apart from their parents. That last line is where I said it's time for the Nazi comparisons because to me that's unconscionable. These are kids who speak Spanish. They don't speak English. Why in the fuck would you make them recite the Pledge of Allegiance? It's cruel, it's inhumane, and this country is damaging them, like damaging them for the rest of their lives, and we're making them pledge allegiance, and that they don't even understand what they're doing. It's so cruel, it's so unchristian, it's so fucking unchristian and un-American, it's fascist, and it just really, uh, it's horrifying. So we have to bear witness, that's the other thing, we have to bear witness. I have lots of, you know, I have friends and uh, Republicans and all this other shit, um, and they don't ever say anything. They don't. They don't criticize this man. They don't criticize what he's doing. They might bitch about how much money we spend on immigrants compared to seniors that you know have to choose between rent and prescription. They have nothing to do with one another. Nothing to do with one another. And if you're upset about the plight of seniors in the United States, you need to fucking look at the Republican Party, not the migrants, not the immigrants and their children. So, anyways, that's my issue. Or they, or wait a minute, I just because uh, we're both on a roll, and I'm sure others are, and I hope we all get heated up. Or those like people in my family that voted for him and don't want to acknowledge it now, they just don't want to talk about it. So when you're talking about these issues, they're like I, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. So yeah, thank God they'll never vote for him again. But come on, you got to be part of the conversation that you started. With the great little boat when you went in there. It yeah. is an issue. It's a grave issue, and. One last thing, you know, I, I, I'm very familiar with being an Asian studies major at a liberal arts college, might I point out, who worked hard to pay off his loan, who had Pell Grants and had the ability to pay it off. So it's not undoable if the government made those monies available to pay back like they did during our day. But anyway, I see images of the Japanese internment camps. I see what happened in Northern California. That's what I see in these images, and it makes me sick. My final thought, though. On the positive side is this small little town. It's right outside, I guess, 95,000 people right outside of Atlanta, Georgia, Mark. And the coolest thing, it wasn't planned, but coincidentally, the town of South Fulton, Georgia. Now we're talking about the judicial, you know, uh, branch of the judicial government, which, of course, our president wants to, uh, you know, alleviate. But every woman that works there is black. It's not a diversity experiment, but they do things differently. So the story starts, it's a CNN story, when LaDawn LBJ Jones walked into a meeting at work a couple of months ago when she started, she was hit with a serious case of black girl magic. I mean, the chief court clerk, the court clerk, another court clerk, court administrator, public defender, solicitor, interim police chief, chief judge, all of them black women. They don't think it's ever been done before. Isn't that crazy? I like that. It's very cool. So my two quotes, I had to pick two because I, I searched through. Um, and this ties in with the Immaculate, the woman I was talking about earlier, talking about faith and, and all that. A strong black woman speaking to me and catching my attention yesterday as it regards to what's going on in our country and what happened in her country. Anyway, the first quote is from uh, ballerina Misty Copeland, first black prima donna uh, for, out of New York. She says, I wouldn't be here without all of the black women around me. Put us together and we can do anything. My last quote is an African proverb, and I love this one, and it resonates beyond just being black women. When there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt you. I love that quote. I do love that, and I love our show, and I love our, our passion. And uh, did I say we're back on YouTube? No, anyways. Um, you, you did. You did. Oh, okay, I okay. I can't remember because I'm old. I forget this stuff. You do. And I promise, guys, I apologize for the bad audio. I, I will find my headpiece. And, Mark, I'm keeping you after class. So when we hang up, I'm calling you back. Okay, call me on the cell. All right, guys. Thank you so much for Bye, listening. Bye, everybody. Another twist, number 69. Bye. Bye.